Hi there, welcome to Crossfader, the online DJ school. My name is Jamie Hartley, and in this video, I'm here to help you get started with Tractor Pro 3 and your new DJ equipment. We have five beginner tips and tricks to help you navigate the software and get set up with your hardware. Tractor can look and be a very daunting and confusing piece of software because it's so powerful. We're going to look at how to strip it down, keep it simple. These five tips are really going to help you get started. Please remember, if you've got any comments, drop them below and remember to like, share and subscribe. Also, let us know in the comments if there's anything that you've learned that you didn't know before at the end. Let's take a closer look. Upon launching the Tractor software, it can be very, very daunting, especially if it launches in this view. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to manipulate the view of Tractor and to simplify it a bit, especially for beginner DJs. So first of all, there are four different view options and these can be found here. We have Essential, which is probably the best place to get started. Extended, which might look something like this or a variation with way more controls visible. Browser, which can be accessed as a shortcut using the space bar. And this means if you're in a different um, view, sorry, if you press the space bar, this means you can see your library in full view or get your decks back in view. Last, we have the mixer. This is a simplified version of the extended version. We have the effects across the top, the mixer section in the middle and the crossfader section along the center. I'd recommend to start with just to use it on Essential, but it's worth knowing about the other views. For example, if you click on Mixer, this is where you would record your sets. You'd hit the record button and this is where I'm recording this right now. Um, and that tab is hidden under there. So that's something you'll probably want to do as a beginner as well. But let's put it back into Essential mode. Next, you'll want to think about music management. The bottom half of Tractor is all about managing your music. So we have things called the track collection, you have playlists, and there are other options as well. What you want to do is start organizing your music in playlists. To add a playlist, just right click and create a new playlist. You can then title it. And then it's as simple as either dragging and dropping from your finder, and you can drag files in that way, or you can go into iTunes and drag files in from iTunes. Or you can actually, if you just if I just collapse by double clicking these, go into your Explorer and find the music files in your Explorer and then drag them across. For example, we could drag this into a playlist that we've created or we could just drag it into the track collection. Track collection is the entire library of music that has been dragged into the track to software. To analyze any music, just select the song that you want to analyze or command an A on Mac will select all and you can right click and analyze. If I just go into one of these playlists, we can analyze those files. You'll be asked for a few options, but just leave it on all and press OK. And this will add things like the BPM data and the key data. The BPM is important when it comes to mixing and beat matching and getting your tracks in time as a beginner DJ. A quick note, you can drag and drop your favorite playlist into this section up here for easy access at any point. Now let's look at the tempo controls. If we load a song in and play it, we have the tempo control here on the Tractor S2 Mark III. This speeds up and slows down the track. Now, at the moment, you can see by this readout that it speeds up by 16% and slows down by 16%. This can be changed and you can make this finer or wider depending on your mixing style and what you want to mix into each other. Let me just show you where that is in the settings. Click the gear icon here. Then if you navigate to the transport settings, you can change the tempo range from 2% right up to 100%. So for example, let's put it on 50% and you'll notice now we can really slow down this track and speed it up. So this is good for transitioning between genres. If you're sticking to one genre, you could leave it on 8% to get much finer control over the tempo adjust. While we're talking about the tempo adjust, it's worth noting this icon here, which is called key lock. This is also has a button on the controller here to turn this on and off. And what this does is it locks the pitch of the track, whether you speed it up or slow it down. Let's listen when I turn it off, when the track is much slower. The pitch goes down. You'll also hear when I nudge it, it goes up and down in pitch. Now this is a personal preference. I like to keep it on. As long as you're not stretching the track too far, it keeps the dynamics nice and clean and it sounds uh, much better when you're mixing in key. 
Next, we need to understand where the settings for the particular controller are within Traktor. There are a few options that you can change for each controller that you have plugged in. One of the main options though, if we click the gear icon and go down to the actual controller that we've got plugged in, here we have the Traktor S2 Mark III settings. The main one I wanted to point out is the transport controls, and this is the tempo faders, whether they're absolute or relative. I think as a beginner DJ, it's best to start on absolute, so that wherever this position is, it replicates down here. This is plus 6.2%, as the readout suggests there. What starts to happen if relative mode is on, when you load certain tracks, it doesn't exactly stay to the right position. So you'll notice on this tempo adjust on the actual hardware, it's not quite in the center, but on the software, it says it's 0.00%. So that would be the center position for that song. And if I come right down, it goes to plus 7.2%, whereas this one goes to 8%. So it starts to get a bit funny with the tempo controls. I'd highly recommend just leaving this on absolute. While we're in the Traktor S2 Mark III settings, I just wanted to also point out that on touching the platter, it's on scratch mode. This is so that you can scratch and scroll through the track, but you can also change this to pitch bend. So it doesn't stop the record, but it speeds it up and slows it down. Again, this is just personal preference. Another thing you're going to use as a beginner DJ are the mixer effects. These are located in the center of the mixer here with these two pots for each channel and then there are four effects to select. Now, we don't know what's in each of these effects at the moment because of the view. So you can change it to mixer view so you can see what they are. You'll notice we've got a drop down here and as we change them, they change automatically. But let's just click the drop down and here are four different effects to choose from. We've got filter, dual delay, reverb and flanger. And I'm not going to go into each one and how to use them, but it's worth knowing which is under each color and under each number. These can also be changed in the settings. If you click on the gear icon, go to the mixer, you can then change the mixer effects slot and choose how you want them set up. There are actually more in there to have a play around with and experiment with too. This is just worth knowing. You need to get used to what's within each um, number so that you can activate it with ease when you're mixing. If you want to learn how to actually apply these mixer effects in your set, then check out some of our online courses specifically for Traktor. Next are the waveforms. As a beginner DJ, you need to learn your music and understand what different elements are within the songs, i.e. where the breakdowns are, where the buildups are, whether there are low frequencies or higher frequencies in certain sections of the song. Now at the moment, you can see that these kick drums are red and that indicates it's a lower frequency. This is a very repetitive beat, but let's just load on another song, any song here. And you can see on the waveform, the obvious sections to the music. So we've got the main section, we've got breakdowns, and that's indicated by the different colors. This is a vocal, whereas this has some lower frequencies in. We can change this spectrum color if yours doesn't look like this. Click on the gear icon. Then if we go to Dex layout, we can change the color mode from spectrum to different variations. So yours might be an ultraviolet at the moment. You can have infrared, x-ray, but the best one is spectrum because you can see the different frequencies in the music. Lastly, something else you may want to be aware of is this drop down icon here. This opens up another tab which has grid edit mode, Q mode, and the move mode. The Q mode is very useful for setting up your cue points and changing the cue points into different, um, whether they're load cues, grid cues, or hot cues. This is something we explain way further in our online courses. And grid mode, so you can edit the grid of the song so it's correct in case you decide to use sync or want to make sure that your tracks BPM are correct. This is also something that we dive deep into. You'll learn how to edit the grid of acapellas as well as normal songs if that grid's incorrect. I now hope you've got a bit of a clearer understanding around the Traktor Pro 3 software and your hardware. And more than anything, it's helped you get started mixing and DJing. If you want to learn some new tricks with your Traktor software, then click the link for a free DJ lesson from one of our online DJ courses. If you like it, then we hope to see you inside one of our courses very soon. We look forward to helping you learn and adapt and grow as a DJ. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon.